probably never really will care about me again. That's okay. I'm at St. Mary's College in California. We're a small private liberal arts. It's a great community college. Talk to me. Try to speak. Um, this is the flowing lab. If you're in the wrong place, uh, that's your fault. <laughs> so, but oh, oops, that was a good move right there. Cable got screwed up again. My cat ate my mouse, which was an $80 mouse, so I'll just say I'm not very happy. Man, that's a nice ring around. Yep. Looks great for League of Legends. <laughs> So why flow? There's a couple of reasons why you want to flow and organize uh, what your opponent's seeing to organize the debate and to have a record of the round. The first two sound really obvious. It's the third one that actually I think matters. Having a record of the round has multiple benefits to it, and I'm sure that I have more slides that kind of go over it. Yep. So what do they say? Flow and your opponents will let you keep track of what your opponents have to say. Every flow should have its own sheet. That's what I mean by like every argument gets its own sheet. Advantage one has its own individual piece of paper that you would write all of those arguments. Of course, I don't have papers, so I'm going to talk about it in napkins form. So our paper number one over here is all of the on-case stuff. It's fine. You can write them on the board eventually. The advantage one will have its own piece of paper. Advantage two will have its own piece of paper. The disad will have its own piece of paper. It's important to keep it segregated, um, and you don't usually hear me say that. Because sometimes debates go up to 10 sheets, like Trollbert. Um, like people will go for a lot of pieces of paper in a round. And at the end of the round, if you're the one that has them all on like two sheets, it's your fault for screwing up the round. So you want to make sure that you are making it easy. Uh, you have 25 minutes before the MO can talk about anything half the time. You will forget shit from the PMC if you don't write it down. So having clean and organized flows are good. It allows you to organize the round because flows can allow you to organize it. Each sheet represents a series of choices. We don't really talk about choices as much in parliamentary debate as we do in other formats of competition. Uh, I'm a big Magic the Gathering player. My girlfriend was the best, with us, the highest ranked Magic player that was a woman in Arizona when we were there. Like we're really big into it. And like it's all about choices. And the way that I look at Magic is how people look at policy debates. Like I have my tub, six of cards, and I'm about to whip your ass with it. And so when you think about they're all in a series of choices. Each sheet and each argument on those sheets presents you with choices you can make and choices your opponent can make. Understanding those choices requires a clean flow, however. If you don't have your flow organized, you're going to be bummed. Keep a copy. Because flowing is key to post-tournament file writing. We don't have a case list. You know if SDSU runs a K, they're probably going to run it again. Like, that's how they roll. So NAU not really kind of a deal this year because I'm policy pro or part of the program right now. But like schools who run similar arguments, you need to be able to keep track of those after the term. You want it for speech redos. You only become a better speaker by keeping your flows. Uh, talking to your critics and coaches later is also an important reason of keeping your flows. General flowing tips for us. Structure, labeling, listening, keeping the flow, asking questions, and sharing later. So first, in structure, flowing, you want to do it in the same structure as best as you can as your opponent and as your partner goes along. Uh, sometimes it's harder. Uh, you want to write down all the numbering that your partner uses so that you can refer to your partner. That's what other people say. I hate numbering on things. Like, I'm really not the biggest fan of it, but that's because I was a lazy K debater, and so I just collapsed and it didn't matter. Um, but writing down the different, like, sub point A, the little one, all those things is really important. Labeling. Label your free flows. Like, you want to make sure that at the top of the sheet you have a little section that says, this is advantage one. And the way that some people will do that is on their sheet, they'll write, like, A, B, one, and then they'll write their ingredients and whatnot on there. Keep in mind, the sheet should have, if you're flowing the PMC, it will have six columns in it. If you're flowing the LOC, it will have five columns in it, for the most part. So you want to have, like, have imaginary lines that kind of go down and divide your sheet up. Never actually write lines, because some people, without meaning to, will actually try to fit their flows in the lines. And then it becomes a job of, can I fit it in the line, as opposed to getting it on paper. So make sure you are always labeling your free flows 
And when you do that, it helps you keep that order. Like you can keep it in that column because you're doing it during 20 minutes of prep. Uh, don't just write a wall of text for the love of God. You'll lose yourself. Instead, use short labels and create distinction between them. Ones, twos, Roman numerals, letters, etc., etc. Listening. I cannot tell you how many rounds have been lost because you didn't listen. Not you, but the debater in the proverbial sense. And what I mean by this is listen before you write. Do not assume you know what your opponents are going to say. These assumptions are bad, okay? And this is important because I, I've been, I fell into this trap when I was a younger debater. I just said, oh, they said econ, so I know what they're going to say now because I've heard this before. No, write what your opponent is saying, not what you wish that they had said. Keep listening. You will not get better by shutting off your ears. Like, if they're like, they're too fast, I can't hear them. Like, I've never heard anyone tell a running back, you're not going to get paid as much because you ran too fast. Right? You'll never hear an athlete be told that they're too fast, slow down, is not fair to other people. Debate is as much a sport in the sense of physical exertion during your speech as any sport I did. I played basketball, I played football, I know I'm scrawny, I was only freshman year. But like I played a lot of sports and like I understood what it meant to be dedicated to those. And like doing speed drills 30 minutes a day is a good start. I mean I heard rumors Todd Graham would tape uh, like actual policy files to tell to make Zayu run around the building holding 30 pound tubs doing spread drills. Rumors. Work on it outside of the round, aka listen to more rap music. It's good for you. Just keep flowing. Never stop flowing. You can't get better if you don't do it. Like, even in a round, you can improve your flowing skills just by continuing. So just remember, just keep flowing. Sharing is caring. And by this, I mean, be willing to share your flows with your partner. A lot of the problem, like times, the way that you think about the academic papers you're writing for school right now, you are probably actually uh, spending too much time thinking this is my personal literature. Like, I wrote this myself. It's between me and the teacher. Get away from that in your schooling. Share your shit with other people. Find people you can send your papers to and get them to look at it so you get better feedback. The same idea is true here with your partner. Share your flows. In the policy world, like, we used to flow for our partners, so that's kind of where this comes from a little bit. And, like, I'm still a policy hack at heart, so sorry. Uh, but write clearly so other people can read it. When you're writing during prep an argument for your partner and they can't read it, your partner looks like an idiot and you look like an asshole. So don't do that. I missed that. Ask questions. There's no prep time in Parley, so this is the closest thing you're going to get, is to ask a question to slow them down so you can flow. And this will be your only source of hint. And questions are good, so don't be afraid to ask them. There is a like huge thing like now that we only take one or two questions in Parley, which is probably better than the days where we took 20 but it's not a good number either it's for one or two. And that's because we're afraid to ask questions because we know our opponents aren't going to waste their speech time, which is kind of shitty to think about. Like, we can't have a better debate because someone wants to get through with what they're saying. Reflect on that, though. How to flow. So how do I write down everything they say? What is a flow and how to flow it down? So I do not write as fast as you speak. So you need abbreviations. They are friends, not food. Do not ignore them. More abbreviations are better. And each round has its own abbreviations. Uh, I use my computer to flow on, so hedge. It's faster to write hedge as H-E-G when I'm talking about hedge funds, even though that's not the right spelling. But that turns it all into hegemony on my flow. It makes it really hard to do that. So like, I had to create a different style of that. So it became H-F for hedge funds, and H-F-M for hedge fund managers. But that could also be the Hall of Fame member if we're having a sports topic. I am giving a sports topic as a metaphor lecture later. Don't know what I'm going to say about it because I didn't think they'd actually pick it, but hey. These are abbreviations um, that they have in the Emory style guide. I'm going to have the Emory, uh, this printed off hopefully at some time in the week for people who need it, that you'll have a copy of it. Or you can just literally Google Emory debate manual and go to page 11 and find this list. But it's really important to use abbreviations. You said counter plan. That takes counter plan. Three syllables, right? That is a length of time that that person will never get back. You can try and write out counter plan, in which case someone should throw a pen at you. 
you should just be writing CP because you will always know that CP stands for counterplant. Maybe your CP is CP with a circle around it. I don't care if you want to get all fancy pants, but I can't read my own handwriting half the time, so I have to like make it simple. S with the circle was my solvency. Sig makes a lot of sense. Impact as an exclamation mark was probably one of the best things I ever learned. People write MPX, that's three letters. What are you doing with your life? Literally, line, space, dot. Doesn't get simpler than that. And if you write an I, how do we know that's not inherency? I know, impacts and inherency are usually not on the same piece of paper. When you're at the end of 13 rounds over two days, three days, and you haven't slept or eaten for the last like 10 hours, you'll make bad mistakes. Prevent those mistakes with your flow. What does a flow look like? This. This is beautiful. This is also a policy flow, sorry. But it's also on like two pages later in the Emory style guide. So if you're looking for it at another time, you can find it there. But it's really obvious. Uh, the check usually says uh, the warrant they have on the last one, so don't worry about it. But violent crime right now, according to the Wall Street Journal in 2000, gun crime left 10,000 people dead. Two, the New York Times says that gun control is like war, and their evidence is bad because of whatever. Like, you have it all in columns. It's only talking about crime. It's only argument and reference towards observations to crime. The first negative, using lines like this is actually really helpful to group arguments. So like, when you're going through, and they have three responses to your uniqueness, and they're all basically the same, because people, when they talk fast, we think that they're saying a lot of things. It's really the same thing three or four times. So figure out when your opponent is wasting your time and when they're not, and don't let them waste your time on your speech. Group their arguments, say these three arguments all say the same thing. Here's one response that's a slayer. That's where this whole, like those two arguments together, that's one answer that uh, assault gun control is at, or whatever it was. This is a while ago for me. So you keep going on. How to get better at flowing, and we're gonna do some actual flowing today. I know that's a novel concept with the lecture. Sorry for the, some of the boring stuff, but it's important to learn some of these concepts. You get better flowing by practice, by doing drills like these. Uh, flow live debate rounds. If there's a debate round online and you haven't flown it, do it now. It doesn't matter if it's parley, policy, high school, college, middle school, but like, you can still find really good debates in any way, shape, or form. Flowing recorded debate rounds are also good. Flowing music is fine. That was one of the first ways I learned how to flow is they put on Twista and said go. Yes, one person here listens to a Twista besides me. And the reason why I listen to rap is because of debate, basically. Because I was like, oh man, this shit's really good. This is for more than just flow. And so like, try different styles of music. Uh, I don't really necessarily recommend trap. I don't think you're gonna get very far with that, <laughs> but okay. Uh, playing cards, there's a technique where like, you have a person sit there and they flip cards at you. Uh, I put this in like orders of importance of like good ideas to bad ideas. The playing card one is, like it's there for you to get the motor skills down, it's really useless in like practical application. Um, and last is to flow your boring teachers. Dear God, we have enough of them. Just flow them when they're speaking. I used to stream a conscious flow of my teachers in classes that I had to be there for. I got really good at flowing. And like I did full sentence flows for them and wrote every word because they spoke at a normal rate of speed. And so if I could flow every word that they said during that lecture, and remember, lectures are an hour. If you can flow for an hour straight, you can definitely flow a seven-minute speech, an eight-minute speech, a four-minute speech, a five-minute speech. Because so much of flowing is like your hand gets tired, right? Because you only flow for eight minutes at a time. Why aren't you do speed drills for 12 minutes, right? Every drill is at least 12 minutes, your speech time plus half. So that way, when you get to the end of the eight minutes, you're not as tired. Flowing drills should be the exact same way. So we're actually gonna do some stuff about that. Um, we have two choices. Either one of you all can come read some stuff because I'm no longer a debater. I have no incentive to ever read a debate argument again. Or I can put a video up. What would you prefer? Somebody read something. Mm -hmm. All right, who wants to volunteer? We'll rotate you all so we'll get time to flow, don't worry. Yeah, let's read. Whatever you want. You can read your flows from the last round. I can pull up a policy file and you can read policy file and I really don't care. It's a co-op, right? This would say too. A little bit. Anybody? Alright. You're gonna make me put on a video then. Because it's doing you have to 
watch critical view. Except for you. There were not many bad rounds of that tournament, thank you. It's a non-traditional debate, so your abbreviations are going to suck. So, like, make them up on the fly. You have to be able to, oh, sorry, power up. Um, you have to be able to, like, kind of keep up with what they're saying. Make your own concept. Remember, debate is its own unique language. There is literature out there that's indicating that text messaging is now its own language and that we have to evaluate it as such. So you, saying you are is actually maybe an appropriate way of speaking via cell phone. In the same way, debate is its own language, and we have to accept that, I think, at some point. So creating your own subcultures within language is inevitable. That's how like, ebonics and other awesome forms of language have occurred. So you want to make sure that you can do that individually for everyone. Everyone ready? Go. It is a fact that the resolution of the United States federal government to significantly increase its provided provision of the disease moderating trend in the South Sudan. It is a fact that women will get an average of point two speaker points less than their male counterparts. It is a fact that only two female female teams broke at this tournament and less than fifty percent of partnerships that broke even had a female competitor. It is a fact that the number of female directors of forensics is less than one fifth. It is a So who's writing out it is a fact? I right. It, I, A, F, I, I, A, F, if you're that worried about it. They're going to repeat that a few times. You've already heard them say it at least twice, right? So at this point, you no longer have to write that down. Things like that when you're going through. It's a fact that the number of female, female teams to win the SPDA is zero. It is a fact that gender... Oh, who's writing female, female, by the way? FF. FF, right? And that we need to be discussed in this debate space. It is our opinion that... Oh, who writes the word debate? D8. DB8. That's as much. DB8 is a waste of space because that's a B. D8 is the list. Other ways is to drop vowels. If you're writing vowels, try not to. It's a systemic problem. It's seen at all schools, all tournaments, and on all teams. Thus, the criticism. Pussy makes the rules. Woo. I'm a super bitch. You say, I'll bump this up. Oh, I'm a super bitch. I fuck it up. I do this shit. You say that. I'm a slut. It ain't your business who I'm fucking with. I do can fuck three bitches and they say that he's a man, but I get it anyway. with twins. She's a whore. That's what they say. It's time to take the word back. Slut is now a compliment. A sexy ass female who running shit and confident. Lyrically, don't fuck with me. The greatest in the world. Live, living on my pussy. All my ladies, let me hear you. I'm a CEO, dream girl, drug dealer. Real just like my titties. You can even cop a fila. Finger looking good. Treat my pussy like a meal. Talk about my tip size. I need to see your dick size. Show me what you're working with. I better win a big prize. Our act to see is a seven minute performance, a sum of story, statistics, and songs, a seven minute plan text called the PMC. Yo, that's too nasty, and why? Alright, so who's still on the same piece of paper? You wanna. So when you hear the, like, that's one of the things that you can do to cheat, is when you hear everyone else kind of flip sheets, that's when you just flip sheets. That's like my whole, like, just keep swimming, like, thing when I was a freshman. I didn't know when I was supposed to change pieces of paper, but I was like, and like you gotta look out to see when other people are doing it. At this point, like you could kind of see as you took a second or two. And that's what smart debaters do. They let you have a second or two at the end of each flow before they go on to the next one. So if there's an awkward pause, so to speak, like it's not awkward, it's strategic, and it's brilliant, and it's beautiful. So there's that. Um, back at it. Your mouth's so vulgar. Why? Why you gotta sing all those nasty records and all that? But I've been representing the ladies, and we got something to say. We've been quiet too long, lady. Like verification. Except point B is the solid The first argument, in 1992, Dr. Dre released Bitches Ain't Shit, reducing women to hoes and tricks. The second argument, the history of hip-hop is essentially male-dominated. At every turn, it excluded the female voice, not only by actively excluding women from the space, but by controlling the space and making it hostile to the female voice. The genre got its start from the degradation of the female body. Women were 
seen as objects and sex symbols. In the 1990s, women began the hip-hop feminist movement designed to investigate the intersection of race, culture, class, and sex. Hip-hop has been transformed into a space to defy these sexist norms and reclaim a culture that has historically been oppressed. The second artist in music is used historically as an avenue for liberation and change. Look to the 1960s. What's up? Change is a triangle. It's the math symbol delta. Stands for change. It's a good way to save yourself a lot of words. Because like people will always say change, but like Obama, I don't know. But like they will constantly be using that kind of phrase. So make sure that for those key ones that you have those. That was used to push against a militaristic movement in Libya. The rappers and live the rebels in Libya are using rap music to try and advocate for their cause in New Orleans. Early jazz took contemporary white music and they transformed it for their purposes. The debate space similarly mirrors the hip hop experience, thus confronting gender and sexism in this space. Using hip hop is uniquely key. The little ways that we have designated speech types. I get to talk for seven minutes and you don't get to interrupt me. But you have to listen to what I have to say because you have to respond and the judges have to listen to what I have to say because you have to make an RFD in a couple of minutes. It means that this is uniquely key that it's important that you engage with this, not just ignore it like you would in a forum. That additionally, the fact that you are confronting the other side is uniquely key because we get to explore this argument. We get to see how it plays in the debate around that hip hop feminism is able to solve. The fact that I can use vulgarities and I can occupy this space in the exact same way that a man can. You talk about your dick, I will tell you about my pussy. It's an indication of why we can create a equality through this movement. Additionally, Spelman College had a hip hop feminist movement, and when Nelly came, they said, You better sit down with us and you tell us about the rhetoric that you use. And Nelly said, No thanks, I won't show up. We say that this argument creates a space where new arguments can come up and absorb their oppression and the systems of oppression that they have faced is a unique way of solving it. Additionally, we say the national space is uniquely key, that this is not a regional tournament. The talented one, Sita, no one knows who won the UTD, that this is the tournament of excellence, which means when this argument wins here, it has credibility that in this national space uniquely excludes women. That when you look at the novice area, it is 55% women, 45% women. Women dominate novice. When they get into open, that number drastically decreases. When you get to the NPTE, that is strikingly small. It is an indication of why we have to win here. I can't do nothing, girl, without somebody bugging. I used to think that it was me, but now I see it wasn't. They told me to change the call me names, so I pop one. Opinions are like assholes, and everybody's got one. How many rules am I to break before you understand that your double standards don't mean shit to me? Jesus. Women push through the hip-hop space in order to get their voices heard. At first, pioneers of hip-hop like Missy Elliott were accused of being vulgar for trying to get their voice heard in a male-dominated society. What was once inappropriate is now appreciated and evolved into a movement. There are parallels to the debate space. We seek to rush through these norms. Boys sit the fuck down and listen to the ladies speak. Game test page. The first impact is women on women hatred that we constantly are fear uh, that uh, there are so few of us we are constantly competing with each other in order to be the best biggie. We all fight against each other in order to be the alpha female. That means that we use gossip or rumors or glaring at each other when we're in the hallways. We use slut shaming in order to be the alpha female. We say that this is always going to be the indication that if you're the best girl, you can compete against only the other women to be the best today. You are never called the best debater. It's an indication of how we constantly compete each other. Though whether I wear or who I slept with is an indication of my value in this community and a unique problem, the fact that female judges are responsible for the biggest speaker point differential between male and female competitors is an indication that women are a part of the problem. We say that this always makes sexism metal and pushes women out of the community because we can't be competitive here. The fact that there are no coalitions because we are fighting against each other. There is no leadership because women don't get to succeed in this space. They don't become coaches. They don't become DOS. It's a reason why there are never female role models that we get to look up to. The second impact is masking. The current way that we address it creates a masking effect where we ignore our own actions or the systemic problems and focus on a specific program or a specific issue because that is easier than looking internally at the specific issue that we have been complicit in. This means that there will never be any solvency for the issue because the focus is misdirected. It means the problem uniquely gets always inevitably worse. The fact that there is no self-reflection because it is easier to talk about how Whitman made the mistake or another program made the mistake than thinking about the actions that we have done to screw over other people in this community. That means that we always create these scapegoats and push people out of this community. The next impact is a male savior. The controlling the narrative, countering the system and debate has become trendy. That means that you get to read your fed app or you get to read or post on Facebook. Just keep swimming, right? This is like when if there is a difference between like flowing for round and flowing for practice. Flowing for like this video will always be here. Like these two women and the two men who are going to follow them, this video will always be here. It is the second most hits of any video of MPTE or NPDA in the history of the organization. Like, I promise this video is here. Use these opportunities, and like, these are really good rounds if you're like, oh shit, I, I'm totally understand this, I'm down with this, this is me. Like, watch them later. But like, 
try to get your fluent on for every time you can. Whenever someone's speaking, always be right. ABR. But how much feminism means to you, and you start controlling the space, and that is a uniquely damning problem. That is appropriation of female voices at the point that you get to define what my experience has been like in this community means that my voice never gets hurt. You, it feels deny agency to women that I have to wait for a man to talk about what my issues are. That it's incredible in the man community, in the community gets to post something on Facebook, and then it has value. When I say it, it doesn't mean a damn thing. That means that women are always pushed out of this space. That if I post something on Facebook about the experiences or sexual harassment that I've seen, the last comment tells me that I need to go read the literature. That is an indication of how women are always pushed out of this space because men try and dominate it. These are the impacts the affirmative they will solve. So, how do you tell if you have a good flow or not at the end of the speech? The amount of words you have written in the paper? Yeah, that's definitely a way, but like, what happens if they're all and zips buts? So like word count, this is one of those things like thank God we moved beyond the early 2000s where fact and value debate existed, unless you're in California, which case, sorry, I feel your pain on there too. Um, and like, then you have to debate like fact, and they talk about the difference between preponderance of evidence and the like quality of evidence. And it's so like, I would definitely say that like having words on sheet is definitely the first step. And then the second step is having the right, like how do you determine the right words? Talk more debate rounds. Gonna say, would it be if I can like pretty much draw a map of this entire argument and follow it? Mm -hmm. That's definitely like the next step is can you follow your own flow? What do you think a mastery level is? You can give the speech back. You can read the exact same speech. You give the like in this round, it's almost impossible. Like if you probably can't hip hop like she can, like that's a joke. But like. You know, you have other speeches that you can definitely do that for. Like more traditional forms of criticism are a little bit easier to flow, which is the next speech is a little bit more traditional compared to this. Um, and along with that, and there's just like a lot to be said about being able to read back those things. So let's hop on into the next speech. So for this one, hopefully Brandon gives us a roadmap. Thank you. 
First argument is that this debate community is an institution filled with whiteness. Our only goal should be to abolish white debate and make some point of this is that white debate structurally depolitizes racial oppression and affirms the notion that it's not racism is not a structural issue. All MPDA classifications alone will not be colored and include a person's color uh, categorized with but separate from race. This limits the discussion of how to, uh, how to use race and uh, the speak of the color and the part of the person's identity and this is a reduction of the person includes the ways in which we can use our uh, uh, use our uh, social location as a source of personal privilege. The argument is that the logic of dissociation of uh, uh, racial construction uh, constructs a way in which we can make through white participation. White uh, debate makes uh, makes uh, problem solving the game and form and force uh, participants in the same structures that cause individual oppression. The C argument is that the community has only gotten better at discussing the symptoms of the problems that commitment to the uh, discussion of the solutions of structural problems has become nothing more than discussion without actually seeking the uh, uh, production. The second argument is that whiteness is a debate that transforms and began into a geography which has uh, about this reason through white privilege. Jason, the sub one A. This geography gives materiality to whiteness and patriarchy within our community. The lack of participation of persons of color and women in particular is a matter that shown that the uh, base space is an unsafe, uh, unsafe place for so these types of views. This can be seen in the way the last 14 MPT champions have been uh, with uh, 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 only 14 of them, uh, three of them have been persons of color and one of them was a white woman. Yeah, these results have been seen as normal within our community and now I'm the question the reason why they became successful in the first place. The third argument is that we have an ethical obligation to abolish whiteness and debate that ASA points that participation in the MPT is a specific privilege in itself. The team process was the point system judging preferences in the tournament, uh, the tournament selection all the way to be able to produce a type of white performance and meaning of the MPT is the purpose is the best location to be able to advocate for uh, education and change. The argument is the most central question within the round is the methodology used to be used to compete on purpose systems of whiteness cannot debate practice provided a liberatory or uh, radical practices the likes. The first link is that the affirmative racialized is the explanation of hip hop, which ignores all the violence that hip hop has been framed as. This is a recurrent type of narrative that black men are the violence and the way that they destroy a white woman. You know, this justifies the fact that they're uh, lynching all that black men because the way in which they need to protect, uh, protect uh, black women from the black man and this type of mentality. This is the way in which they frame it in terms of uh, they all the black men on the doctor grade, put the other racism, uh, this is they create this discrimination. The second argument is that the affirmative is the discussion of hip hop is the way of black men and this is the way in the way that people can not actually contribute to the problem and the loss of the balance of competition of uh, white people uh, to make the machine more invisible. It's critical to have a microaggression because basically what can happen is that uh, white producers can increase the system to take attention to the idea of basically separating people from the kind of community as opposed to actually necessarily saying that people are they're, they're responsible for the representation of how they represent their own individuals on their own um, community. The impact. Okay, we got to see the third. The third is going to be that the focus on women and reinforces that idea of a white gender binary. This is going to be seen as the way that they don't talk about being uh, labeled as feminine that makes them more women. Like, they don't talk about being labeled as feminine being the problem. They say that women. They say they're being labeled as feminine. They say that they're not being labeled as feminine. The problem being labeled as more of a this is like more the way that the crisis of liberty. The other thing that that's right is the hierarchy of women can carry oppression. These are the ways which have my body. They're going to be done on our daughter. They're going to be done on our daughter. Our impact is that whiteness and whiteness is the cause of racism within the system of power known as the MPT. Back to the historical centers of whiteness. Jared's about the time of segregation, bathrooms did not be racist only, but red whites only, meaning that we must seek to abolish whiteness. Our first argument is that whiteness is the very to reduce microaggression against minorities and make them feel unwanted and actively pushed out. That white commitment to the disassociation of identity forces minorities to fit between the other and the community and be successful in this one. This is that our tolerance is producing interesting versions. Our second argument is that silence and spectatorship are all forms of microaggression. This can be seen in the study of the University of New Mexico. That when Chicano and Chicano students are uh, racist come up with in the classroom, that these students found it equally as racist as uh, the reaction was equally as racist as the actual comment itself, meaning that silence prevents liberation and forces to make, uh, forces, uh, because they're forces minorities that identify the relationship uh, with the white world and trade them with the white world. Uh, so the alternative. But the NAURS to endorse the performance of abolition of whiteness in parliamentary debate. But the NAURS to endorse the performance of abolition of whiteness in parliamentary debate. Thanks, Tommy. Solvency? First establishes performance is destroyed by supremacy by dying in the public space. They traumatize the inherent conscious associated with the white identity. The ace of point is that you're either with us or against us. Abolition is a great binary which you are actively resistant and intent on destroying white supremacy or you're complicit within the system. This makes debaters more accountable for the narratives that they present because the argument can no longer just be waved away as simply playing a game. The second argument is that we are the politics of education. Our performance exposes how the MPD practices of full whiteness. The ace of point is that we disrupt the narrative that whiteness is a neutral term and implicated in the power structures and performance is participated. The best way to eliminate 
couple of races up at the Fort of the Clarks to fix up. However, you were uh, one of the parties today, one of the parts of the country, those were actively seeking to destroy. An example of this would be Stephen Foster, who tried to stop the slavery, would go to churches and uh, demand that uh, preachers advocate for anti slavery. He was forced to be in the room for his demand on this. We too demand their support for the new abolitionist movement within the uh, within this political space, meaning that the voting for NWRS is that confrontation with white supremacy. The C argument is that even if our education demands the impossible of politics, uh, abolitionism encourages the impossibility by advocating for the destruction of oppressive systems. Our third argument is that our education is a break from the community's discussion of race. The A sub point is that framing racism experience of the individual or ethnic or skin color or gender ignores the system and the systematic involvement within the problem. Abolitionism is a method to be able to solve these issues in our community by targeting the whiteness of the system and privileges that justifies structural racism. This promotes self choice and leading to personal politics and encourages individual political agency. Permutation would mean that they're going to separate the way, or we should see the same permutation would separate the ways in which they represent the topics and the ways in which they're taking a white stance or not from their own other location within the place. One part of the other, um, okay. So, on case specifically. The first argument would be said that the government and champions of the MTU have been on female female team. That's just, uh, that's just not true. If you look at uh, 1519, yeah, the argument, or this is an example of how this is, it's not something that's been impossible, never happened. This is what we have. So if you drop down to what they said, male savior, like who's at the very bottom. Um, this ignores the political identification in terms of the ways in which it is not, it is not a male female binary within this, but the masculine and feminine types of ideologies in which this is less, or they better have the ground that the interaction that actually happens with them. these types of argumentations that don't necessarily be that there is a one way of, uh, one way of this problem happening in the most female case. For all these reasons, I are going to valid. So after being yelled at for a little bit, take a little second. So this is how I flow. I flow on a laptop because I'm lazy and old and so too bad. Um, at the top of every sheet, you want to be able to like have it labeled. So when I hear case, like they're going to start off the bait, I just label the top case. And if you see some people just label it like inherency or whatever, top was the way that I used to put it, but that felt weird. Um, so like when you're going through and you hear the first argument and they say, there are four reasons why capitalism is inevitable. What should you write? Cap inevitable. Doesn't matter how many reasons, right? They're about to tell you those reasons. So, reason number one, capitalism is inevitable because we're all greedy and we want to continue to uh, like progress and get ahead in the world in the way that we see that is by gaining more possessions. Like you desire, like you definitely want to put uh, cap equals gain possessions. But I would put like pos when I was doing it, and you have to be careful with that because like pos now can no longer be like a different abbreviation. It's very rare that you're gonna be like piece of shit in round or whatever. But like you know maybe it comes up, so you have to be careful with some of your abbreviations. Um, This is just like a bunch of different abbreviations that aren't even in the other one. Demo for democracy, defo for deforestation. Uh, there's no CX in all of these, or partly, but there's that. Um, CP for counter plan, condo, I'm sure some of you heard that before. CI for uh, counter interpretation. For checks, I will literally just make a check. It's hard to do that in flowing. Uh, B4 because those are really good ones to have. What down. was because? BC.
gov is faster than the GMT, G, BMT, or whatever. Oh, key two, K2, that's a good one to remember. AT is an answer to, but we don't need to do that much really in Um And you for non-unique. We don't really have very many overviews in Parley because our debates don't get big enough and they don't matter. OPOP is actually a lot faster than overpop. And you'll always know what the answer for overpopulation is. I mean, unless you have really bad handwriting, you write UPOP, but we're really not going to have very much underpopulation arguments, I think. And you very rarely talk about K pops. Six is like a really good one to remember because everyone loves politics except me. So, kind of just as you go down, you want to make sure that you're just using your abbreviations. And, like, when you write it on the sheet, when you just write S with the circle around it, you should know that instantly means in your head solve it, just like it does to the computer. And when you're talking about inherency, you should know INH really just is inherency. And like when you start to familiarize and you create your own code, it's going to get better. The only way that you really can create your own code, though, is to do it more, to do it often, and to keep up on it. Uh, you'll definitely, like if you talk to some of the open debaters right now that didn't do very much work over summer, half of them are like this between speeches because like it's been so long. I actually broke like the bone right here in my hand punching a wall so like I just can't write them like that anymore. So that's why I type. Um, I, can, I know that there's obviously these kinds of rounds that are on the internet, but are there more like stock issues and just, like even... Oh yeah, happen? like literally on the entire right side of the page is basically every stock issues round. The only, like as long as you don't search in a URS, you're fine. That's obviously what I'm searching for. <laughs> yeah. Like if you put in, uh, man, like anything else, MPTE 2014, and now boom, that's definitely not critical. I think I actually watched that round. Uh, NPTE, that one we just watched, that one's probably critical because RS is right there. I see the back, that one's definitely critical. Uh, finals of 2013, that's not critical at all. Like all of these kinds of things. So if you're looking for the more stock version of it, like there's that, but just to get into a habit of like slowing down before I get into a faster, more critical flow. You're not going to find a like slower flow anywhere online. No, I mean, uh, stock issues are fine. I mean, I'm still learning critiques, like flowing something, learning to flow something I don't even know when I'm flowing it is like, well, like that's the best. Thing. So I did CrossFit for a while, which basically tells you to be, um, the whole point of debate is to become comfortable feeling uncomfortable. And I know that sounds kind of like very cliche or very fairy tale-ish, but um, what happens when someone runs a keg into the next round? Like literally in two hours. Yeah, but if I don't have my shorthand down from having worked on stuff I already know, how am I gonna put shorthand down on something I don't know? Ah, but why is the keg any harder than the stock issues? Right, it's all like perception. Because like we think of stock issues as being a traditional form of debate, like it's easier for us inherently, as opposed to if we accepted like critical forms of debate as a traditional form of argument, because it's been around for thirty plus years. Like this isn't just like directed to you. This is like more of musings of the community for the last like three years, and really what led to the rounds we just watched. Uh, like kind of discussion. So uh, I don't know. Like I really thought about just straight up cutting out teaching dissents at my school. We were not going to run dissenting counter plans ever. We were only going to run critiques. And like there's definitely like some programs that have done that in the past. And so like even on the policy level, they just don't teach dissents anymore. And I'm talking more than just like Townsend and shit like that that you hear that are all famous. Like Chico thought about doing that a while ago because they're just like, our team is full of like people of color who like have no idea how the economy works because they have more important shit to worry about than like this politics argument or this deficit spending argument. So we're going to talk about this other thing that like they can learn to. So, I don't know, I'm really like always curious about why we want to learn this one first. Because the really easy way to think about a critique is that it's just a dissat and a counter plan framework. And so when you think about it that way and you like listen to one, 
it'll all of a sudden just make sense. So like flowing things that are harder, that's the whole CrossFit thing, like you do things that you wouldn't normally do, so when, if it ever comes up, like you can actually do it. Um, I also love being way too damn high sometimes. Other questions? Because like at this point, like we can basically watch more videos, but like I don't really see a point in that. Like you can go home and do those, because we can play the cards, but you can go home and do those things. So like I'm ready to like, peace out. Well, how do you tell you go home?